Okay, we're at the um, biggest section of this chapter, which is on building a PC. When it comes to building a PC, it's really going to be putting together everything we've done in the class from chapter one all the way through chapter eight. It is time intensive and the project itself can be daunting at times. The big thing on building a PC, if you're doing one for yourself, is to know your end goal. In the case of this project, we're going to have a budget set for us and you're going to try to build the best PC you can within your budget. But at all times, when you when you know what your end goal is, then you appropriately uh, spend money where you know you should spend money. If you know you're building a B PC that's not going to be for gaming, you wouldn't waste four hundred dollars or a third of your budget on a video card. If, however, you know you are going to be doing gaming, then you may spend an inappropriate amount of money on your video card in order to have the best gaming experience. So we have to know what our end goal is, what kind of system we're trying to build. We have to set a budget and then we really need to spreadsheet that budget out so that we're keeping track of all those things that um, we have to spend our money on. When we're looking at this course, we talked about home, business and gamer, which is really talking cheap, mid-range and high-end or gamer PC is what the whole course has been built around, looking at the different variety of parts. And you definitely can use any of the parts you've used in any of your projects on this particular project to get you started. As far as our budget, um, we may have a budget anywhere between $500, which is a realistic low-end budget, all the way up to $2,000, $3,000. And everyone in the course is going to be given a specific amount of money that when they do their project, uh, they're going to have as their budget. And when we look at that, you're going to have to be within $50 under to $10 over. So you've got kind of a $60 window on your budget. In reality, when you set a budget to build a PC, you may have no window. You may say, I've got $700 to spend and that's all I can spend. You can definitely go under that, but you know you can't go over your budget. You only have X amount of money. And I've, I've had several students that took my class that the following Christmas, they asked their parents for money to build a PC and they got money from all the relatives and they said, hey, I got $650, I'm gonna build a PC. Um, I'm going to put together my list where you look at it. And that's kind of the idea of what you're going to do uh, here is build a PC on a specific amount of money budget that you've got. You're going to have a spreadsheet that I'm going to share with you that you're going to have to compare a one that you buy with one that you build. And as you build it, you're going to have to keep track of all the things. And so the budget looks very similar to this. You'll put in your amount that you have available, and then it will continually calculate how much you have remaining of your budget as you build it. There are certain things that are required on your system, and there are certain things that are optional on your system. Uh, you have to have a case to build it in. You don't have to have case cooling. It's re recommended, obviously, but you don't have to. You have to have a power supply that's the right wattage for the system you built, so you may choose that actually very last. Um, you have to have a motherboard. You have to have a CPU. The CPU has to have some kind of cooling. If you're looking at a very low-end budget, then you would be smart to buy a CPU that has a cooling fan in the box, um, but it has to have some kind of cooling. I, obviously, you have to have memory. Minimum is 8, maximum is 32, totally up to you and your budget, which uh, um, amount of memory you get. Um, you don't have to have an add-on graphics card. You can have an add-on graphics card. If you're trying to build a machine to just be an at-home PC, then uh, just like most of the car computers here at school, you don't have to add an extra video card. However, you're not going to be able to do high-end processing and gaming without it. So you may have to put in a graphics card. Storage, you have to have some kind of storage, whether you have a spinny drive, uh, um, a traditional solid state, mm, or a M.2 drive. M.2 solid state drive, yay. Um, as your storage, you have to have some kind of storage to hold your operating system, your programs, and your data. Uh, as a uh, minimum, you have to have a minimum of 256 gig of storage on your system, and there is no maximum. So you can have multiple drives, 
It's totally up to you. And you do not have to have an optical drive, but you could have an optical drive on your system. So you're going to go and kind of start building your system. And you can use anything you've done previously in the projects. Uh, you can start with your budget motherboard. You've already got it, uh, a mo that motherboard chosen. You've already got a CPU uh, that goes with that motherboard possibly. So you could already start with that motherboard and your CPU and your memory uh, and then go, OK, I've got that core thing. Now I'm going to pick a, a case and a power supply and memory and storage that goes along with that and just see where it falls and then go, OK, now I've got a tweak. Um, you could start with that and then go, OK, I've got three hundred dollars more than I thought. I'm going to upgrade my GPU, or I'm going to upgrade the amount of memory, or I'm going to get more storage or better storage. You're not going to fill this out the first time and have the number. You're going to try it the first time and go, okay, this is what I've got to move. I've got to, I've got to lower my cost of something. I guess I'll have to get a cheaper uh, CPU, or I'll have to do less RAM, whatever. But you're going to see that it's not going to be a one-time shot. You just get it right on target uh, with the amount of money. Uh, when you're done, you're going to end up with this uh, chart that lets you compare the two uh, in your project. Um, and we'll talk about that more when we get to the project. In the chapter reading, um, you've got uh, some reading on, on this section, on section four. And the big two things are uh, know what your objective is, know what your budget is. And then I've written up um, kind of, uh, oops, wrong one. A uh, little explanation on how to choose your parts and things to think about when you're choosing parts. And like I said, you can't do it in one shot. You can't just go and say, hey, this is the PC I'm building and know that it's going to be in price. That's why you have a spreadsheet and that's why you have to kind of start it, do it once and go, mm, I've got I've got to lose $300. I've got to gain $1,000. That's the easiest thing in the world. You throw in a high-end video card and uh, eat up $1,000 in a second. Um, so it isn't a one-time thing. In one day, you'll have your pre-built done, uh, and you'll be able to finish those slides on that and move on. And then it will take you take you a couple days to come up with the system that you want. I do recommend starting with what you know, starting with your um, low-end motherboard and possibly your CPU from there and looking at your grid because you've got those costs already and then your graphics card and looking at cases cases have a wide variety of prices there's an advantage of when you go to shop um, using one site to keep track of everything because you can keep putting it in your cart and that's also going to keep track of those prices so if you go ahead and um, make a account on a new egg and you say I'm going to go ahead and start doing my components and I'm going to start with my motherboard and you go and decide what kind of, of processor you're going to get I'm going to go with an AMD possibly and I know it's going to be a Ryzen 5 so hey this is a this is a great one uh, this is what I'm going to just throwing this out there. I'm going to start with that. So as soon as I throw it in my cart, I can go back to shopping now. And my cart kind of keeps track up here in the top right hand corner of how much I'm looking at too as I'm putting together that PC and building that PC. That $229 motherboard. If I was trying to buy a $500 computer, boop, no way, right? Um, I'm already out the window with that. Um, but if I was building a $1,000 computer or a $1,500 computer, there's nothing wrong with, with that price point. So you're going to have to really keep track of those things. And this is one nice way of doing it. And then I can always go back here and see what things I've got in my cart uh, later. So I, I like doing that on Newegg. You can, as you price things out, go and look on any other website. It has to be new. It has to be a main site. You can't buy used things on on um, eBay or anything like that. So as I go and look at these, I'm going to take and start working, like I said, from what I know when I'm when I'm building a PC and trying to work on it bit by bit, piece by piece, and realize I'm going to have to go back. I may be like, oh wow, you know what? I've got to lower my price. I've got to look at other motherboards out there. You know, what else can I get that's a, that's an AMD motherboard that's much less expensive. So I can go and say, hey, I, it's an AM4 motherboard. Um, and I know that that I want it to um, be new. 
but now I want to see, you know, how, what's the lowest price I can go on a new one um, that's an AM4 motherboard. I, wow, I can go all the way down to $59. That would save me a ton. Will that take the Ryzen um, uh, 5000? Eh, no, it only takes the third and fourth generation, so I'd have to go and step it up a little bit more to find one. In fact, if I go ahead over here, Bet if I set that, I would get all the ones that take the five. And now I'm at $134 is my minimum. And nope, I still got the two and 3000 series processor on there. You get the idea though. I don't wanna waste a bunch of time having you watch me shop. Um, I'm just gonna work on it uh, piece by piece and then throw different parts in there until I get um, my system inside the budget that I'm looking for. And that's the way I do it in real life as well. Um, motherboards, although they're very important, I gotta make sure I've got the right sockets and I've got uh, M.2 slots and it'll support the CPU and the amount of memory. I can generally go with my lower cost motherboard so that I spend more on my CPU and my video card. Those are the two things that I, prior I prioritize the most, the CPU and the video card. Uh, and then will be the RAM because I can always upgrade the RAM later. I can put uh, just eight gig in a system and then add eight later. Um, I can buy a low end um, hard drive and then buy an M.2 later and use that low end hard drive as a data drive for me. But it's really prohibitive to try to swap out my video card or my CPU later. So that's that's it for starting the process of um, how do I how do I go about purchasing um, a PC, and then we're going to talk about that even more when we start looking at the project and getting down into the project.